want you close Maybe hold your hand a little while Somehow I know You're gonna be the girl that I'll end up calling my own We ride around in style Sleeves rolled up, glasses on And then you make that smile And my heart starts racing When I'm with you Hello YouTube, Steve-O Trucker here, welcome to my channel, it is, today is Saturday the 14th of September, I need to think about that, sorry, <laughs> and today we may do a day vlog, but I'm going to probably take you through a first parade today, so ain't going to be my proper formal video on the first parade, but hey, I thought we'd do something a bit different on the day vlog. So hopefully you enjoy that. Um, any other news? We are currently in Magor Services. Yep, load chef. Yep, got the receipt there. For just double check. I was about to say welcome break. It wasn't all much the same really. I should do a review on this place, but hey, maybe I will. We'll see. Um, where are we off to today? We are currently, as planned at the moment, heading down towards Oxford. So, we've just loaded last night here, parked up last night here, obviously. And today we're going to make our way down to Oxford. So, I'll probably see you in a little bit once I've done the first parade. So I'll take you around with my new camera and uh, take you around on the first parade. See you in a second. Hello YouTube! Steve Trucker here. Right, we're going to go through a quick first parade. So uh, bear with me. This is first time filming on this device, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Right, what do I do? I'm in the cab at the moment. I'll flip you around. Bonk. So on the dash, if I can point you down into the dash, I'm checking the engine oil, which I've already done, which is all good. I've checked the coolant and all that already, so you do it very much on the dash in, in the DAF. I'll just tick her over, she's going to start beeping. She's going to go on because of her brake system trailer malfunction, because the air pressure is low. We're going to turn all the lights on. I won't do my full beams, but I'll do my beacon. Because it's just cool. <laughs> it's just cool to do your beacon. Uh, which... I said it's down here in the death and put your beacon put your, put your flashing uh put your hazards on and I'll flip you back around. So we're gonna climb out, have a look around the truck. Okay, we're now outside the wagon. What I like to do is start off from the front. Also check that all your lights are working. Your side, your beacons. We'll come down to our spotlights. Sorry, we're on a slight hill, so we all look like we're a bit askew here, and we're actually not. Yep, all fogs, all side lights are working on here. And then plates on it. Fun light, light marker. Check her toes. Give it a good old kick. You're still toe caps. Don't obviously knack your, your feet in doing it. Just give it a quick kick. You start to know when it's good or bad. Check your lights in your trailer. And obviously check your Susie's and all your connections onto your trailer. Check it, you've still got your fuel cap. Also, you carry on checking your tyres as you're going along. The air pressure's going to be a bit low at the moment, so I'm expecting it to be a bit deflated. Check your landing legs. Or your trailer legs, shall I say. Check that any equipment on your trailer is still fitted. It's not been messed with. As you can hear, the air is going up. Yeah, again, we'll check our tyres down here. 
check your lights as you're going along so if you're not seeing everything we'll see check that the doors are shut check your connections and on the tanker also check your lights here again but on the tanker check your valves as well so i'll show you in a second so if it's a bit dark on this end i'll say check your lights they look all good check your valves down here are all good you might not have seen that but you got some valves that i've showed you on my truck tour video Check that your bin shut, which I can see it shut from here. And we basically go all back down the wagon. Check that your tires all good. Somebody's lobbed some rubbish beside me, which great. Trail tail lights all working fine there. All good. Check tires again and importantly check out your fifth wheel connection check that your pins and all that are all still in no one's played around with it you do not want that bad boy coming loose so that's a brief walk around so I'll go back up in the truck and we'll finish off our little chit chat video not chit chat but you know talk about a first braid Ugh. sorry about this guys it's a bit awkward when you're holding a camera getting in and out of the cab <laughs> and we're just turning the beacons off so we're not not the mad truck in the truck truck park anymore Ugh. Not the best videography I've ever done, but I know, it is what it is. So, right, everything's fine. I go on to, I'll flip you around right now. So, whoop. on my pad, I've already logged on, I've already put my put, truck in. This is how I do my first braids, is, yep, everything's all good. And dandy. So I'm not going to run you through all this because it could vary to your company a little bit. I uh, don't need to report anything really reported what need to be reported. And just sign it. Off it goes. Vehicle check successful. Jobs are good in. So just that simple. That's what I do for a vehicle check. Takes about 10 minutes or so. Jobs are good in. And yeah. It's that simple. Each company is a bit different. You may have a paper check you may have to fill out. Each company is a bit different. Some of the checks on timesheets, you know, there's some variation between companies, so that's why I'm not saying, right, you will be on the computer system, this is how it is done in every company. No, it's not. But the general vehicle check we've done, that's a general overview of a vehicle check. That's like what I call a running check during the week. On my Monday, I do a very in-depth check on everything. That was actually fairly in-depth, to be honest, but I like to check, like, your engine oil, coolant, you know, is there any leaks? Signs of leaks. The other thing I forgot to mention, being a tanker, is checking there's no signs of leak of your product as well, if you are Evon tankers. If there's something wrong, if it's a bulb, as long as you've got a bulb replacement pack and you can do it, sort out yourself. You know, it's rectified. Some companies want you to report that still, so do that. If you can't resolve it, follow your company procedure. Find out what your company procedure is if you do not know what your company procedure is. It's always handy to know because you will eventually get to that stage where you need to get hold of something. In worst case, no, just phone the office up. If you can't quite remember what you need to do to do something, just say, look, you know, I have a defect, say, top white light cluster on, light bar, can't get to it, 
you know it's not working then they'll come up with a solution they might send a mechanic out or send you somewhere to get it resolved depend on the legality of doing so so I'm sorry it's very brief but I thought I'd take you around something a bit different and I'll probably break into time lapse and see you either after I've tipped down Oxford Way or something like that so I'll see you in a little bit Hopefully you've enjoyed that bit of time lapse walk around the truck. We have literally just tipped down near Oxford away, more near Digcock than anything, as you may have seen on the time lapse. So the time lapse only cut out only down the road from here. So I haven't really filmed on the site. This is just the bit of the drive out of the site. Nothing top secret about this. Not that there is. It's, uh, I'll give you a bit of taste of what I do. Uh, let's make just double checking because it's a bit tight along this road. And I've watch the bins as I turn out from here as well. Oh, I don't think the farmer would be too impressed with her wife his bins out. So where 
well, where are we off to now? We're going to our usual customer near, sort of near ship to Mallet, Bristol sort of way. You know, our regular, as I'll call this, which is, you know, a fair little drive away. And then we're not going to get there to about 12.30 if we don't stop at all. And the current time is 9.52, so that's about two hours, nine... Yeah, two and a half hours. So I'm going to probably have to stop for a facilities break, which means just a quick stop. Maybe grab a brew or something. We'll see. Maybe I might check out Chittenham again. So I'm impressed with that truck stop. I think Scott is as well what I've gathered on his latest vlogs. Even I didn't watch, I don't think I've watched full, the full one that he went to uh, Chipnam actually. I did see a bit of it, that's why now I think he is reasonably impressed. I need to watch the rest through. I just saw sort of my phone updated halfway through watching that vlog last night. <laughs> and I thought when it updated, I thought I'll go to bed now. <laughs> one of those moments. Yeah, so all good. We made pretty good delivery. We had to wait for the farmer because we had to put some acid into the load to kill off the yeast a wee bit. Because we had quite an active load of yeast, which would not be good for the animals. You know, don't ask me what it's all used for. And I know it all goes into the feeds, and that's all I know. <laughs> Basically, it's spent yeast we had taken from the Magor Brewery. I'm not going to lie, very clips at Magor. You can probably put one and two together straight away and go, yep, that was a Magor Brewery you popped to. <laughs> Must have been. Yeah, so it's always good to, you know, they're pretty good farmers there at that farm. I do like coming here. Plus also the tanks have measurements things on the side, which makes my job a lot more easier. So he was having uh, exploding tanks. <laughs> or worrying that the tank is going to overfill, in other words. That's what I mean by exploding tanks. It isn't literally the tank exploding, it's more that the fact that the load starts coming out the top and volcanoing out. No one wants that. But as I said, there is some sites we go to that I understand why they don't have them on the tanks. It all, it's money at the end of the day. But they don't have any form of checking how much is in the tank or if anything is accurately. So we can't even tell when they're getting full. You know, if you think it, the best we can do is knock on the side of the tank and sort of ascertain how full or empty it may be. Which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, as I said, and sometimes when it doesn't, you can find out the hard way, as they would say. Yeah, I think I'm sussing the uh, driver score thing out in the DAF. I'm up to around about 75 at the moment for this week, so I'm doing pretty well. It's sort of varying today. I've been my best at it today, but I'm doing, trying to work on it. I'm trying to use the the retarder and exhaust brake as best as I can. But obviously driving sensibly at the same time. Because the retarder is pretty good. I know, I know, I know, I'll knock it off now. <laughs> Quite knock it off. At least she reminded me. That's da, 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 all good to go. Yeah, so as I said, we're going off to our usual customer, which is going to take us on the A34 M4 Bristol and down to our customer. Which is the route I'm opting for. 
The other one I was considering was uh, A34 Fifth, the uh, cut up to um, Warminster and across from Ship to Mallet. You know, but you got Stonehenge. Yes, it's not the whole of those now. I think both routes would be as equally as long, I think. And Bristol was. Wall City isn't too bad to cut through. And yeah, I'm very impressed with how the channel is progressing at the moment. I've been working on some of the channel art as well, which I think I have mentioned in maybe a prior vlog. So there's still going to be some more alterations on the channel in terms of logoing, banner design. You know, I've come up with a slightly better one, but at the moment it's not squared up in the avatar area on it at the moment. I need to do that on the computer because it won't allow me to alter it on the phone, bizarrely. But I'm sort of liking the truck reel look for my channel logo. And I've put that together on, uh, I've got the program on the iPad, but it's awesome. You, I have used like standard shapes, but I've put them into obviously to make it look like a truck wheel, put my own little flare on it. It's pretty simple design, but I wanted something that's fairly simple, but it stands out and it represents what I do in a way. I thought about a steering wheel or something like that. But a steering wheel is mm, very hard to tell what the steering wheel is for. I suppose you could argue it with the tyre as well, but to me, I think the tyre made more sense. And it gives me some room to add stuff on it in the future, or, you know, change my logoing a little bit on it. And maybe if I get myself into some graphical design, you never know <laughs> what I could do with that. I've got a few crazy ideas, but hey, I need to do a bit more practicing on some programs, see what I can do. I'm also set to trying out a few things on my vlogs, like different transitions and stuff like that at the moment, just to see what works for me, learning different techniques during the editing process as well, just better myself. So I may start doing some colour correction as well. You know, I'm, I hope it me, I'm not the best on that front, so we'll ever see. But hopefully it all equal, you know, more improved vlogs for the future, more better content, etc, etc, and so forth and so forth. I will probably add what I'm saying into an update video that I will be maybe doing today as well. So, yeah. I mean, today's going well so far. I will probably catch you in a little bit, do a bit of a time lapse up. Uh, Try to think what I should see. Here. Probably after I've loaded might be the best option. When on the route down, because we're going down to Dorchester with the load from the ship to Mallet. So it's one of my favourite sort of ends of the deliveries from that from my usual customer there. Yep, the bingo calls are all out at the moment. And yeah, I will catch you very shortly. Jump into the car on a Friday night, I want to drive with you. Looking for a bar in the nearest town, I've never seen a sky so blue. We don't have a plan and the night is young, it doesn't matter what to be yours
about the way you move No, there ain't nobody like There ain't nobody like So lucky to be yours trucker here again I know you know it's me but bad habits die hard <laughs> well we're loaded on uh, as you may recognize this road from loads of previous vlogs and videos you know I said it is our regular this customer so it is what it is I can't go right boss we're going somewhere different today we do where the work is for obvious reasons so well, we're on the way down to Dorchester, which, uh, as you can see, it's a nice day. Yeah, it's been a really nice day. I mean, it's quite warm. I've actually got my aircon on almost the coldest mood at the moment. Not with the high blowers on for noise reasons. I don't want it to interfere with the video too much. And also the AirPod is quite equally as noisy as having up on the next blower setting so that's the only reason why I don't before anybody says why well, I haven't got the airpod going that's why I don't really use it while I'm driving unless I know when I'm stopping I'll start about five minutes beforehand especially if I know I'll be turning the engine off and uh, we need to grab some fuel en route as well so we'll probably get down to uh, Poddymore services or you know, near Yeovil as we can fuel up there. I would divert a little bit and go up to the fuel bunk up at uh, Nunny Catch. That's Nunny Catch, the name is. Near, near the Tor, tor Quarry. Which has a good fuel bunker there, to be honest, and the pumps are quick, but it's a little bit of a diversion for us. And it'll just make more sense to pop into Poddymore, even though the pumps are a little bit slow then and a little bit temperamental. But it still do the job. Plus, also the advantage of probably more, probably grab an ice cream or something. Well, we're there. Also, doesn't feel like a very productive day today. So, starting at Magor this morning, going down to Black Black Barn, and yes, I'm, I'm affected getting two loads in today. But well, technically, the load I delivered this morning, according to the system. And you never go by what the system says, I know, but it, it is kind of for yesterday. <laughs> but actually, you know, I think it's working in our favour though, I think, at the moment. So I think if I got here a lot earlier, I don't think there would have been a load ready for us. So, we'll have to see. There's uh, some uh, roadworks up through this village as well, which uh, are quite tight. 
let's say. <laughs> and not, well, I know they don't have much choice of where to put them, but as I say, it just always seems to be that there's roadworks in this village. Or something's up in it. And I've said this before, it just makes you wonder if the utility companies even communicate with each other. I know it's all competition and all, but uh, just putting my anti wall back or hill hold function on, which is quite cool in the DAF. You know, there's a lot of tech in here to be honest, but it it's very subtle in the DAF. You know, it's all behind the scenes. And that's what I kind of like, is tech that you can override and it's kind of behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, you know it's there, but, you know, you don't have to be forced to watch it all the time, <laughs> as I would say. But the hill hole function is really good in this truck. It, it holds you really well. So as soon as I stop, I don't have to do any funky presses of the foot brake. I just need to lightly press it and it's on. I don't have to like fully depress it or do any craziness like you have to do on other trucks and other vehicles. You know, and I'm, I think the Scania one's very similar to this. And I'll assume the Volvo system is very similar as well, if I recall correctly. But the Scania system, yeah, is very, even on the manual, is very much like this. It just works. It does the job. It does what it's designed to. So, as you can see, you've got some blue barriers there. This isn't the tightest bit, it's actually a little bit further around the bend. Along that no other truckers we arranged it for us. Which is all very possible, it does happen now and again, and you know, it's... This is the tight bit here. Because you've got a bush on the left, it's really being pushed to one side a little bit by a truck. You can tell with my uh, blind side, and we're literally millimetres away from the barrier there. That's how tight we were. Clear. It is what it is, they need to get their job done at the end of the day. It but that's one of the challenges of driving down into villages like this sometimes. And this is not the worst village you could ever go through. This is relatively a piece of cake, just that for me got to know where, like, this corner here can be a bit of a tricky corner, especially if you meet another truck. Because when you come down the other way, you'll cut that corner. No matter how wide you take that bend, I've had locals have a go at me before all go why didn't you stay on your side of the road I'm like, I can't I've went as far around the bend as I could and still the trailer will cut the corner slightly just because it's going down a slight little bit of hill and it is a tight bend and equally when we come up this way as you see we do have to kind of go wide as well and the key thing is, as I always say, is just take it easy. It's not a race. I could do this a lot quicker if I wanted to, but then safety would be a question, as they would say. Because I always think it's, it's probably not going to be me, but it'll be the person who does not expect a truck to be coming down here. And that's when things will go wrong. Oh, they've pretty much demolished all that now. It was an old chicken farm or something. I think it was, well, I've no idea, it may have even been the pig farm, but I think it may have been a chicken farm with the buildings there. It's a real nice place around there. You see all the lakes here, you know, around, uh, what's this place? West Harp, Harp Tree. I keep messing up the names of the places around here. There's a very nice area, this, as, as a whole. I think it's a big tourist spot. And, you 
it, I say it is very popular on the holidays with tourists. I say we're not far from Bristol Airport as well from here at all. We're sort of on the other side of those lakes to the left. In a way. If you're not familiar to this sort of area around Bristol, Bristol ship to Mallet sort of area. And yeah, everything's it's been a good day, it's just a normal sort of day. Just I said just feeling a bit like I could be making more progress, but you know, it's more this all days you sort of think, could I do it do, done more or do more? But not really. I'm roughly on what schedule I could draw up anyway. So because we'll get this delivered, we may get back up well, I suspect we're coming back here. Seeing if they were going to stop for us or not. Most of them, thank you very much. So we are Max Gross at the moment, so we do have to treat her with a lot of respect. You know, she is, as you can see, very slow off the mark initially. But that that would be for almost any other truck to do the same thing in a way. You know, it's not the worst truck to be driving, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to hate on Mercedes here. I really do apologise for hating the Mercedes, but if I was in the Mercedes, it would have had a debate in the gears on, on that turn. It would have literally been like, what gear should I have? Well, I'm not too sure if we should have that gear. Well, let's let's put it down to the vote. <laughs> and by then you're like, why aren't we moving? <laughs> <laughs> I've had my foot pressed down for over 10 seconds. <laughs> well, literally, you'll be sat there like, you can tell it's thinking about it, but it's just like, mm. Apparently they have improved it though, apparently. But mm, I have to wait to see, see till I get an opportunity to see what it's actually like, to make a judgement. It was fascinating when I was at Chip to Mallet with the show. I understand, you know, the salesman at the end of the day, same as on the daft stand, they all try to push their product at the end of the day and promote their product and get a bit of favouritism behind it and all that. And as I said in my uh, mirror cam video, I am very sceptical of all this tech that's in the Mercedes. And not just with the mirror cam, it's also with the digital displays. I have severe concerns that it's going to cause display, what I would call display fatigue. I think it's all very cool. What I mean by display fatigue, it's a bit like what people who sit behind computers all day, you know, they're meant to take a break every hour or so, aren't they? You're meant to get up and have a five or ten minute, you know, whatever it is, you know, rest from looking at the screen. Also, you got the flicker as well, which would make you tired. So it's actually, actually adding to more fatigue towards the driver as well. And that, that is actually a legitimate concern, along with the reliability of this tech. You know, the fact that it's so dependent on the tech, on the displays for almost everything. There's no real like analog, just you know. I know, yes, they can still fail, and they're all technically tied into the, uh, you know, the main link computer anyway, so you, you know, I permit it proving it on my Scania. If, if the main computer crashes and dies, you're knackered either way. But that, you know, a lot of that is already proven tech, you know, and backups are backups. But, yeah, that's a, it's a debate for another day. And as I said, I open admit I'm very sceptical with this tech. It's exciting, it's very interesting. We'll have to see how it progresses and how it goes. I'm a very much in favour of how, like, Scania, Volvo, even Renault, and to a degree, DAF have in implemented all their technologies, you know. It's all subtly done, especially on the next gen. You know, the next gen, you'd be surprised how smart that is. It's mentally clever. It's mind-bogglingly good. 
but at the same time it still kept a lot of the backups a lot of the backup systems that are within the truck you know proven technologies they've left in as well you know so you I said like also you look at the T Wings, you can have a digital speedo, but you still got the analogue speedo as well. So if the digital one fails, you still got the analogue one. So you can at least get it back to where you need to get it sorted at worst case. Not have to wait for a mechanic necessarily, dependent, you know, as long as it hasn't affected nothing else. But that's as I said, a debate for another day. And as I said, we have to see how time goes. And as I keep saying, when you drive down country roads like this, you will get stuck behind cyclists. And the key thing is to stay patient. You know, it can get frustrating at times. You have your good cyclists, you have your bad cyclists. I'm not saying the bad, you're the bad if they don't let you go by. But it can become frustrating when you're stuck behind them for miles after mile after mile. So he's letting us go by, which makes a pleasant change, or he's just going down there. <laughs> one or the other but cheers anyway we'll take advantage of that and make some progress hope you can still see me okay I'm sorry about on my last vlog that um, the focus on the Sony wasn't brilliant uh, hopefully on this one it's a bit more better um, it may still have done the same thing we'll have to see have to see if there's a way around it or sorting that out it might be something we have to live with for a little bit so i'm going to get another dji camera though i'm seriously considering getting another because because it, it is really good i mean the sony is good when it when it works it's awesome it's, i like the layout i like the setup as well it's awesome having the the actual boom mic as well so I have no mic attached onto me, you're on basically a uh, bit like a boom mic sort of thing beside it. So you still pick up all the, uh, some of the noises around the cab, as if you're in the truck. But it makes, hopefully, me a bit more clearer to listen to. And I am trying to work on, you know, how I talk, wording and phrasing. Not my strongest, but we're getting there. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, Mr. Eldy, you just have to watch it around this bend. It's not too bad today. So it's a bit, as you know, very tight further down here as well. So the key word down here is just take it steady. As otherwise you're just going to get yourself into a little bit of trouble otherwise not saying you can't get yourself into pickle we've done the right thing down here but at least you reduce the chances of messing up you leave it down to the other parties as i always say leave it down to the other road users to make mistakes not you <laughs> And yes, this could add you know, a few minutes onto my drive time, but I will rather take it a bit steady down here than, as I, as I said, you know, get yourself into a pickle. Be careful here, because some of the trees on the left do have a habit of just liking to plong the truck. So we go a bit wide there. And so we slow down just to see what's up ahead, to make sure there's nothing coming down. I know we're going through it at the moment. Almost out. But still take it easy, because through this village, as you know, it bends around, cars come flying around, and, uh, you know, they kind of don't expect to see a truck. So right. This is where you can get a bit spicy around here. If somebody comes flying. people don't realise we have to keep a wee bit out because of the trees and the bushes. That's what that guy still has his white mirror folded up. I don't think he folded it up for words, something tells me. <laughs> Interesting. Never mind. <laughs> 
There's a lot of things you notice from the gap. And so it's a really nice area, this as well. You know, so I said a lot of people are more focused on the scenery than they would be thinking about what could be coming down here. Let me just take it easy. Doing OK on my driver score, up to about 72%. Not my highest, but we, we're working up it again. I finally get to 72% and it can sometimes sort of mm, be a bit of a struggle to get higher. So I need to probably work on some more stuff, I think. Or it just becomes really long-winded. But we'll suss it out, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> Okay, so the plan is, is we get down to Dorchester, tip off, so I'll probably do a time lapse probably after the Oval. Don't wait for us, that's good. Happy days. And then I'll probably see you, that's where I think when there'll be the best time to leave on the way back up. Yeah, that might be the best opportunity to have a, a cool chit chat. Or I'll just end it when I finish the day. We'll have a see, we'll see how we do things. You see me when you see me next. <laughs> so. I'll see you with a time lapse now. And I'll see you after I'm tipped. Either on the way back or once we're parked up for the night, one of the two. So I'll see you very shortly.
again. We have just delivered down at Dorchester, around that area. As I'm filmed on the farm, this is literally the exit slip off the farm. So, <laughs> I'm not filming anything really of the farm. So, that was an exciting delivery. <laughs> literally got to the farm gate. And because it's been so warm, the product had heated up inside the tank and created quite a lot of pressure. So it was coming out of my uh, pressure release valve for the emergency one, which isn't necessarily a massive drama, but uh, but because it's on the slight hill downwards, the product started coming out. So it basically sprayed my cap. <laughs> So I've, uh, luckily what I've done, I've tipped the load, in, obviously where you meant to tip it. I'm, what I've done when I realised what was going on, release the pressure. You know, it, it happens. Once in a while, it will happen. Just as a bit of a... Well, in that circumstance of how it was happening, it wasn't the most pleasant. I, I didn't get necessarily covered in this at all, it's just the fact that the truck had... And I've had to clean most, or some of it off, to put it you know what I could get off because uh, luckily I had the jet wash thing on the farm so I quickly utilised that to get the bulk of the dirt off the truck and the trailer or where I could get to with it I couldn't get on top of the uh, whacking on it because ideally I wanted to do that but uh, you know it wasn't going to be safe enough to reach it up there so I thought I've done my best to minimise any mess that I can cause on the roads, which I think I've eliminated the bulk of that and got a lot of it off the cab. But it is what it is. It made it as an interesting delivery. Oops, it's coming. We're going to need to swing out a little bit so we're going the moment. We've got a white car coming. We got somebody flooring it behind them, so I may have been able to go, but I'm not risking it when you see somebody flooring it because they're probably about five times more likely or ten times more likely to do something stupid. And it's no white right way at the end of the day. So. Sorry about this, so I'm just focusing on this junction and so I got the sun in my face as well, which doesn't help. So, a bit of amusing delivery. So I couldn't film any of that because I said that would have involved filming all over the site there. So to get that, so it wasn't worthwhile for YouTube to get that up, just because of uh, the policy that I've agreed with the boss at the end of the day. And certainly not without getting the farmers' consent. So I saw a main to wipe it, you know, I think a look of it of residue when I was washing may have sloped down the roof onto my windshield, but hopefully it's nothing bad. It's looking a lot better than it did. So I'm a bit frustrated it happened, to be honest, but it is what it is. Nothing really I could have done. Just basically what happened was, it was because the pressure got so immense and because I was facing down the hill because my pressure release valve was on the front end of the tanker. So obviously all the product had gone all over that valve and because the pressure was over the amount that that va valve was meant to release at, it released the product at a bit of the, well, a bit of the product, not a huge amount, but enough to make a mess. It basically was doing its job, so. It is what it is, uh, it's better not than not having one, as they would say. So just keep it steady down this hill. It gets a bit tight and interesting down this road, as you may have seen on prior vlogs. So yeah, what were you doing now? So we took down at Dorchester, we're going back up to uh, Shipton Mallet, up to the usual customer again. main lights on just so we can be seen. Just 
people have a habit of not seeing trucks. <laughs> up on the grass and destroy the grass in this village. So I'm sure somebody would get a bit uppity if I did. Never mind, we're through. We're all good. Yeah, and so we're going to have to ship some mallet sort of way. Then we're going down to Salisbury's probably tomorrow looking at the ETA. We're going to be there at 8.30, 35 if we do a 15 which you may very well do. Get up there, load in the morning. As I don't think there'll be enough load there anyway for us today. So I'll see when I get up to Yeovil way because there's some good spots to park up there. And it's only down the road really. So we'll see. So, do, 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 do. as far as that, I would like to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody who supported the channel. As I always say, and everybody who's recently subscribed and who's been subscribed for a long time. And uh, thank you very much for all the kind comments as well. It is appreciated and noted. Just need to drop some rubbish. And yet again, I am blown away with, you know, the progress over the last few weeks in terms of uh, subscription. So keep it up. So if you enjoyed what you've been seeing, please subscribe if you haven't. And if you have, thank you very much. It is appreciated and it helps the channel out at the end of the day. If you know anybody else who's into truck vlogs and stuff like that, let them know, you know, see if they're interested. You know, every little helps, they would say. So my main goal at the moment is just to keep improving the channel where possible. I hope it with content, some of it will be certainly the day vlogs can be a bit mundane like uh, the other vlog. This one's probably been a little bit more exciting by a smidge. So I'm aware about making the day vlogs a bit more entertaining and basically my day vlogs are like my weekly sort of vlogs. You know, I may release more than one a week but likelihood is it'll be just one a week and maybe a subject matter video as well maybe. This week we've I've, I've released a lot, I've spoiled the channel this week and you have weeks a bit like this week that I'll just have quite a bit to release out as long as I've got time to edit it all and, but hopefully with this new laptop we should be on uh, track for that you know don't expect uh, daily vlogs at this stage or anything like that that may be a, a cool thing to aim for but the amount of workload that will require I'll have to see I'm not promising daily vlogs by no means because that is I have full respect for truckers who do do daily vlogs you know even though it's not literally some of them don't do it literally that day but they release every single day it's still a lot of work either way and I have huge respect for those channels who are able to do that you know that must be a lot of work but as I said my main priority at the moment is quality not quantity at the end of the day I try to release a video a week where possible unless I'm really busy or I'm on the holiday or stuff like that or something out of my control that I can't release the content there is normally a reason why I haven't released the content or it's just I haven't had time to produce a video or anything to produce a video on We're very tight to that blue car, but it is what it is. Hmm. So 
I do like being tied to cars at the end of the day. There's, uh, there's very little margin room of ever then. <laughs> so I do try my best to stay well away, but uh, sometimes you do have to go close up. So yeah, so thank you very much for watching today. It, you know, yet again, it is very much appreciated. Um, if you have any questions, anything you would like to see, any ideas for the channel, it, everything is all welcome at the end of the day. What type of content are you into? You know, I enjoy, I said, making content, so if you have some ideas doesn't mean i will do it but if you have an idea just put it down below it won't hurt at the end of the day because you never know i may may do it because uh you know somebody asked the question quite a few months well quite a while ago now about adr so i've done a video of what i know about adr I am also planning some more videos as well, but I'll do an update video probably tonight with all the information of what I'm planning for the channel and all that. I thought I had a bit on the end here, just in case I get a bit tied up and not able to release an update video out at the moment, but I don't see why not. So, uh, yet again, a massive thank you, and uh, I'll call this the end of the vlog. Um, please check out my Instagram, Facebook, as I said on my last vlog, I'm more active on Instagram. I do try my best on Facebook, but I'm still learning it. So, uh, <laughs> Facebook is still a bit of a work site, in a way, but improving. My channel art is getting there, so, you know, each step at a time. So yet again, a massive thank you to all my subs, everybody who supported the channel, and to everybody who's new as well so if you haven't subscribed please smash that big red subscribe button that's what it's there for and please hit that like or dislike button it's all somehow it all works either way anyway which i disagree you know if you dislike a video it should have but yeah who knows we'll see but i will see you in the next one over and out